So welcome back. Uh, so in my attempt to build uh, and complete kind of one of the only real collections I think I actually own um, of collecting all of the mainstream Pokemon games, uh, I have been on the search for a legitimate copy of Leaf Green and Soul Silver. Those, as those will complete um, the first four gens. I have everything else uh, except for those two. I have a bootleg copy of Leaf Green that I mistakenly thought was legitimate. Uh, you can see by the cold contacts here that it's not a uh, legit copy. So um, I've been on the search to find one. And in doing so, I actually found one a couple days ago, which was an authentic copy, which we can tell by the four gold contact pins here and some extra detailing on the, uh, the foil sticker. But I found one of these, but in classic style of, of what I do, uh, this is broken. Um, the eBay listing stated that it just didn't boot when you plugged it in, it would just boot to a white screen uh, and nothing else. So uh, I'm gonna attempt to fix it. It should hopefully be not a too in-depth repair, um, or it could, it depends on what's wrong with it. So we'll find out. But I also got this little note, which I thought was really cute, uh, that came from the seller. Um, <clears throat> it says, thank you for buying. You are my first customer ever, and I appreciate you choosing me. This game has given me a lot of memories, and I do hope you're able to repair it so that you may sum. Mm. This game has given me a lot of memories, and I do hope you're able to repair it so someone else can experience it. Thank you again, uh, Ambrose, which was part of their username. So, uh, I will admit, I actually was really tempted, I really wanted to not touch this uh, when I first got in the mail, but I, I just really wanted to take a look at it. So what happened was I plugged it into my Game Boy. We got just a white screen, uh, like they said, but then, uh, like with all cartridges, I just blew really hard into it, and now it boots, but I still get a white screen. So let's see where it's at right now. So we have Nintendo, and then it's just white. Um, it does make that sound that Fire Red and Leaf Green do when, you know, it, it uh, the, the tooltip thing, but there's no music, no other noises, anything. Uh, and it confirmed that this is not the Game Boy. I have my legit copies of Fire Red. And it, it boots. So just to prove it's not the Game Boy, it's the cartridge. So first thing to do, of course, is to take it apart, which is using one uh, double zero tri-wing bit one on the back, this just slides right out, and then we have our circuit board. So, <clears throat> uh, as a really first cursory look, uh, it does just look a little dirty, so I think I'm gonna go over it with some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip, clean these contacts off, just clean off the board a little bit. I don't see any corrosion or sorts, so we'll, uh, we'll just go clean it with some rubbing alcohol real quick. As I was packing up, uh, I think I might actually have found what the issue is. So I'm gonna see if I can get this angled right here. So right here, see this little brown spot? That looks like the trace has been lifted. And then therefore this pin is not making contact with the trace, which goes down to one of these pins. So what we can do first, um, I'll see if I can bridge the pin to this exposed copper with just a little bit of solder. And if that, if I can't do that, we'll, we'll expose some of the trace and solder or jumper wire. But let's do, let's start with that. So I took a look at that broken trace that I pointed out. Uh, that wasn't it. I used a multimeter and checked each pin, uh, trying to find where on each chip it went and everything makes contact. So. Doesn't help. <laughs> uh, we're gonna try and reflow each chip. I've got some solder here and a hot air gun. Uh, we're gonna try and reflow them, see if that helps. So I think, uh, this is gonna be really hard to see on camera, 
but on the right side here, there is a little bit of a gap between the chip and the board on this side compared to this side. Uh, this is, I think, the save chip. This is the ROM chip, ROM save. Um, you know, looking in a little closer, all of these pins look like they are not actually soldered down, um, which I thought he would have caught with the continuity test, but I can see for sure this one on the bottom here is not connected at all. So I'm gonna run over all of the pins with my actual soldering iron, uh, and we'll see if that makes a difference. We're gonna reflow it and try and connect all these with just some solder. Yes. Okay. Nicely done. Huh. Okay. Do a few things real quick. One, let's look that up, make sure it's not some weird default save. <laughs> so it doesn't look like that that 100 done name thing is any weird default save. Um, so I think we're gonna call that one done. Let's just uh, clean off the board of all the flux that we put on there. And then we can put the screw back in for final reassembly. All right. And then we can just double check one more time. And it still works. Right. Awesome. So. That was a pretty simple one, uh, aside from doing something actually entirely new. I haven't reflown a chip successfully in a while. Um, so our problem was just some bent pins on the save chip that probably came from when it got dropped because this is nicked here. Uh, it's pulling away. So all oh, got dropped, knocked a few pins loose, and uh, it got disconnected. So I'm glad it works. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and come by next time for our next project.